Oh, hey, all right. Not that one, but not that one either. Uh, no. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my big favorite uh, right there. That one's fantastic. <laughs> Split. So we got all that shit out of the way, right? We talked about Persona. We talked about a little bit about Like a Dragon. We talked a little bit about Peter Pan from the 60s. But, Wooly, did you know that a new Silent Hill game came out this week? Oh, 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 I see. Did uh, you did you receive a short message? Wooly, I feel I feel like legitimately cursed because I feel like I mean, Susie knows what she's talking about, and I know what I'm talking about, and I'm sure there's like five or other people that know what they're talking about with Silent Hill or whatever, but like, in terms of long-suffering Silent Hill fan that's gone through all of them, I know one else. I know mm -hmm. one other person. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, it's like, well, I have to, I, like, you know that moment you hit where I, I'm not going to hate watch things anymore. I'm not going to hate watch things. I'm an adult. I don't need to watch something just to talk about how shit it is. And then you pass that, and then you're like, oh, but it's my responsibility to the community. Bitch, David Cage is releasing a new game. You're not going to play it? Fuck out of here. I have here. to. I ha it. You have to. It's an obligation. I have to. It is duty. It is an obligation. Absolutely. So, um... <sighs> yeah. Um, so before we even get into Silent Hill, the message, I would like to point a finger at the PlayStation Store for being the most unreliable piece of shit ever for 4,500 years in a row. Because every single time they go, it's out now. It's not out now. And in fact, when you will be able to get to the thing that is out now on the PlayStation Store, what it actually means is you're going to have to search for its title in the search algorithm as it endlessly crashes on you um, until Jeez. you can find the item you want via search, but not through the updated store um, and then download it and hope it doesn't fail. Okay. Terrible. Wow. Every time. Awful. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, and, and this is going to this is going to segue certainly uh, right. Well, actually, we'll, we'll talk about the playstation announcements later but uh we silent will. hill uh there's so it's interesting because um the idea of the, there's a new silent hill game that's coming out and like i think i saw there was like an interview where they're describing that like this is supposed to be for a new generation and it's like people have their phones on them now and yeah. there needs to be a way to like bring that horror to a modern generation mm -hmm. it's like I I just kind of wonder like I I don't know if this is a a a, a team that's what is it who is it that's, that's making this it's decision? Konami it's directly internal okay yes it's internal Konami um yeah so you're kind of like does it if it's about tech and phones in that way does it does it have to be Silent Hill even is there a reason for that 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 it is apparent or is it just yeah. something that happens to stick that name on it. Well, you see, Wooly, two things. One is that Konami owns the name Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. And two, despite taking place in what I think is Germany, but I'm not sure. I'm genuinely not sure what country the, 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 the game takes place in. I missed it playing through it, but I was informed that there was a, a newspaper article that I had missed playing through the game describing the quote silent hill phenomenon end quote in which mist will suddenly appear in random places Locations in the world elsewhere. Yeah. and cause yeah. curse yeah. magic to appear. Oh, we expansion team, baby. Let's go. We can take it anywhere. So now, take the show now on the Silent road. Hill has escaped the the, the boundaries of the city. It does, it's not about the city anymore. It can be anywhere. Oh hell yeah, absolutely. Um, Hexadrive is a name I have not heard since the Zoe Two uh, remaster. <laughs> Zoe Two and Okami and um, Res. 
all the HD remasters, really. Wind Waker, yeah. So, so um, huh. first of all, right off the bat, um, this the, this game's like tone, perspective, and general premise is like insane, considering they canceled and killed PT. This is a first person free mm -hmm. de short demo game. Well. For Silent Hill. Well, we're doing it on that, our terms, Pat. We're doing that a, that a twitchy monster <laughs> is running at you through repeating hallway. Yes. Like it, it has the repeating hallways yes, from but, PT. Like, but on our terms, we're doing it our way um, without him. And and second of all, when him. I see the phrase "the Silent Hill phenomenon" and that Silent Hill can escape from Silent Hill, it goes, "Oh, that's what Silent Hills was going to be about." Oh, you think so? <laughs> you think that was the idea of like it? I do. Uh huh. Okay. Because it's already Plural. been a thing. Plural. In four, the town actually reaches out past the edge of the town to to a local town. It's I mean, past Brahms. For fra um, for franchise purposes, like it's obviously a, a something you want to be able to say like i can create my own silent hill game anywhere for yeah any but, th reason. but like think about it like in one and two it's contained yeah. and then in three it reaches out to the mall and then four it's like multiple towns over Is it? and then okay. silent hills which you could have also written as silent hill five but anyway yeah but I guess the um, idea of like it being like not connected at all, like creep, but just straight up like it's popping up in Japan is just so, a, a way to franchise. Um, there is a, you know, I'm going to talk about the gameplay first. Let's, let's start there. Let's start there. Um, it is a primary walking sim that you go around seeing spooky stuff, exploring an environment um you'll hit like cutscenes where uh moody things or music will play um you'll read notes you'll hear people talking to you your character will occasionally pull out their cell phone and and text ghosts and that kind of thing there's very very light puzzle solving i think there's only one real puzzle in the whole game where you have to get a combination lock and wait was this a demo or the full game this is a full game. Oh, for it, free. Oh, okay. It was okay. Okay. This is a really important note is that this is a two ish hour game that is uh, for free on the PlayStation. So, like, criticism has to be done within that context because, I mean, it's fucking free. I didn't pay for it. But it is you a. You didn't play it for a, it. I didn't pay for it either. But it is a full product. It is not. Oh, yeah. It's the whole start to bottom. Start to end, beginning to end. Okay. Um,. And uh, the the primary like gameplay aside from exploration and stuff like that is that uh, a monster will chase you in first person, and it kind of works like uh, Shattered Memories chase sequences, okay. where the monster is going to start kind of where you need to go, mm -hmm. so you got to kind of loop them around, yeah, to like uh, to chase you to get to where you need to go, um, with hiding spots and and branches, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, from a gameplay uh, perspective, uh, it has two problems. One is that the turning radius is terrible, which is really bad when you're trying to escape from something in first person. So, like, your your turning speed is really slow. So you will be running and go to turn down a hallway and, like, hit your face on the wall mm. because you just can't turn fast enough. Deliberately so, I assume, because I you're guess to be incapacitated. Uh, the second one is that uh, the final chase sequence is insanely difficult for no reason. So all of the chase sequences up until that point are escape or get through a door. You get to the final chase sequence and it is an enormous chase area in which you have to run around and grab like five key items to unlock a door um, as the monster is chasing you the entire time. And if you die or get caught at any point, you have to do the whole thing over. It doesn't save any progress. Mm -hmm. It is it is it is a very fast version of Slender Man. Okay. Collecting. And the it's notes. terrible. Okay. It's it's awful. Um what can you do besides run and collect the notes? Pray. 
okay. to God. Okay. It's 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 really really hard, and the monster does have rules, and you can juke it, and you kind of have to. But like the because the area is difficult to navigate, it's confusing. You can, you don't have a list of which items you actually got when you're running around. It's it, the the whole environment looks the same. Oh, it's rough. Get like that last gameplay sequence is rough. Um, so I'm gonna go with mediocre on the on the video game side. Okay, it's not it's not the worst, but like it's rough. But you ju you're just walking around, then that's the only thing. Walking, reading, mm -hmm. uh, running. Yep. Okay. You hold up your phone. Yep. Um. Then then comes like the setting and the story and all that. Um, it's a, it is, okay, I'm going to talk about the emotion, okay? I want you to feel an emotion, okay? Okay. It is Steve Buscemi with two skateboards and a music band shirt as saying, how do you do fellow kids? Mm-hmm. Cross Bernie Sanders saying all kids know how to do, so all women know how to do is eat hot chip, and charge lie. they phone, and lie. Correct. Okay. It is those two. Wow, that's actually way more yeah. accurate than I thought it was okay. going to be when I started. The American people um, are tired of women. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No. I'm. I'm. I know. Yeah. I am serious. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um. And be bisexual. Yeah. No. These are. Oh wow. Did the that just that just lines up with the whole game like point to point to point. <laughs> um. That's weird. Uh. Um. <laughs> so we follow our main character Anita, who is at the local suicide building. Um. Where kids go to commit suicide. And um, she is depressed because her friend Maya committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And she's very sad about her friend Maya committing suicide. And uh, she becomes trapped in this building and goes through a series of suicide loops. And you constantly get flashbacks to Maya. And um, the whole time... <laughs> The, the the game is like a masturbatory jerk off session to the idea of suicidal ideation. Like you have characters. So it, when, when you get flashbacks, it cuts to like live action of actors in, in like a studio oh, talking. Really? Right. OK. And huh. they look right at the camera and go, man, it would be so cool if I committed suicide. Bo oh, man, it would be so fucking pool if I committed suicide. Now you might think, Pat, that sounds like the kind of thing that you exaggerate that sounds ridiculous. Uh, mm. It sounds like one of those things that I would paraphrase to be absurd. Yeah, it, it certainly does. However, I mean this without a shadow. I will tone it down to what it actually is. <sighs> cherry blossoms, they, they even when cherry blossoms die, they're still beautiful, even in death. I want to I want to do art about the 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 sadness that girls feel and show the cherry blossom blooming out of them scars and all and and d d d everything has to be beautiful and if you if you want to be beautiful forever you should you, you should die you should die in a beautiful way wouldn't that be beautiful if you just died in a beautiful way and it was so artistic and gorgeous and then you find a note that's like did you know that there was a practice in Japan called harakiri Okay. called honorable suicide okay. in which it would add a, a, a element of societal retrib retribution for societal ills blah 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 and it's like mm -hmm. the the girl is looking at you in the eyes mm -hmm. and saying boy suicide is so cool mm -hmm. and as you can probably tell the the theme of the game is don't commit suicide oh it, okay well what one would what would hope you can tell that it's the theme of the game because when you press start it says hey Mm -hmm. If you feel like committing suicide, mm -hmm. 
you should reach out to somebody for help. Here's the suicide hotline mm -hmm. and some cool. suicide websites that oh. you can go to oh, if you okay. feel like committing suicide. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. So um, there's a couple different ways you can handle that subject matter. And I guess on uh, one end of the slider would be, uh, let's say, Bojack Horseman, The View from Halfway Down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then on the other end would be, I guess, say, uh, 13 Reasons Why. Right. Um, where are we landing? I don't know how to put it on that scale. Okay. I can't be accurate. Okay. What I can tell you... So I'm not going to go through the whole plot. I don't want to spoil it. Okay. It's interesting. Um, it's one of the only games that I can think of it's actually, so it's not made by the people who made Medium. The Medium was made by Bloober Team. The so plot I, that, that's what I was, is... Yes, sorry. That's what I was going to I was actually waiting. I was going to say, hold on a minute. I thought the Bloober Team Silent Hill 2 remake was, yeah, the, was no, where we should... Completely different people. I thought the Bloober Team was the concern we were having because the Medium... No, it's everybody now. And the message in the Medium <laughs> was all about, hey, how rad it would be to totally Sudoku. Um... But this is not no, at all. No, the message in the medium is that if you're too traumatized, you have to you Sudoku. Should, you should actually. Right, 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 right. So, um, I, so I was thinking about that in the context of the Bloober Team game, which is the remake of our SH2. This is a completely different thing. That's okay. All right. Got it. It's everywhere. Um, so it's one of the only games I can think of in which like the plot is wrong. Like its own plot is incorrect because like it starts with like an internal thought that's supposed to like, like lock you into the character's perspective. <laughs> and it's, it's, you start with a like so first suicide hotline information, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is like a quote from the main character who goes, this is a paraphrase. I don't have the exact wording, but it's like, the strongest creatures don't need anything to survive. Their strength is in their loneliness. And it's like, that's not true. <laughs> that's, that's never been true for anything ever. And so like the games, like, like you're supposed to be going through her story and like arguing okay. with that statement. But like it's it's just wrong. And then you get to the end in which she like changes that like she inverts the statement a little bit. And it's still wrong. Like even the new enlightened version is still wrong. Two and a half <laughs> hours is not a whole lot of time, but depending on what you do with it, it could be you can effectively <laughs> deliver a message. Um I well anyway I, I I assume that again from top to bottom here there is a completed narrative. There is a completed narrative, and it is a mess. It is a mess. Um, it is so like a bit. So when I say like, how do you do, fellow kids? Like I watched an yeah. interview with one of the people making it, and it's it's basically a team of older people, people our age or a little older, making a game about how they are sorry to the youth for ruining the economy, and they're sorry about ruining the planet okay. and all that shit. Okay. And so the kids are dealing with the angst of growing up in like a, a blighted economic sector and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's so ungenuine and weird and fake. And it, it really stands out because there's a part of the game. There's like three main acts the third act has nothing to do with the rest of the plot. The third act is we're going to go into some childhood nightmare shit. That's very classic Silent Hill. And it's got a really cool perspective trick where you're moving through a flashback. And every time you walk through a door, the camera moves lower. So your character is like getting younger as you're going through the sequence. Right. Okay. And it's, it's like, it's really good. Okay. Okay. And 
it ends and then goes back to a bunch of teenage girls telling each other that they should commit suicide or not commit suicide, but suicide's so cool. Um, I th I'm trying to think of a singular example that would really sum up how tone deaf and weird the game is. And I think I can. So Maya is a graffiti artist and her graffiti features a lot of cherry blossoms, which is why the monster is a cherry blossom monster. Gotcha. Right. Uh, and she's a talented artist. She's in high school and she's up and coming. Right. Mm hmm. And she's art obsessed. And, you know, if I died, maybe my art would be bigger profile, blah, 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 kind of thing. Right. And there's a part where the main character is like sad about Maya's death, but then opens up her phone and goes to Twitter. It goes to Twitter and looks at Maya's page, who is dead, and goes, still more followers than me. And then scrolls down to her Twitter account where you're hearing people go, where are you going to post pics? Sexy pics. So you got it sexier than that. And it's just her going like, uh, like a weird smile and being like, didn't even get any likes on it. And the funniest thing is she did get likes on it, but not as many as Maya would have gotten. Okay. And it's like, that's, no, this sucks. But that sucks. And that's super fucked up. But that can be a indic that can be a massive character flaw if it is used as such, right? Something like having that kind of fucked up thought in that type of situation can be the type of thing that you can use to establish how fucked your character is, right? I can't. It, so is it used? I'm trying. To I'm that trying end? to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to grab the bits and pieces without totally. Yeah, because there's a twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Um, um, and uh, the the t okay. Hey, Wooly. Because I can tell, I can tell as well that like just from the way you're talking about it, it's like when a game decides to tackle like this type of subject matter, it's asking you to engage with it sincerely to some degree, right? All and, right. And you also, and if you're, and if it's going to use live action bits, then it, that's a that's a bit of a weirder way to go but depending on how you handle it i guess um it might land but you don't want it to feel as if you're like hey we're tackling something very serious therefore whatever we're doing is almost immune from criticism so it's gonna right. be you know you don't, you don't want that vibe to get across you know so um, uh, i have to okay woolly do i have your permission to talk about the the core narrative of this um and we'll we'll will go on and say, hey, skip from yeah, such and such. No, 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 absolutely. Go for it. And if anybody wants okay. to not get spoiled on, on the, so, the, the, the game's the also message, free. then by all means, uh, skip ahead. Um, The game, yeah, okay. Here's a basic summary of events. Anita goes to abandoned building, which people love to commit suicide there. Really depressed. Her friend Maya killed herself, right? Maya, up and coming artist, love cherry blossoms was uh we have lots of flashbacks of maya talking about how cool it would be to kill herself how artistic it would be to kill herself um how much her art would matter after she killed herself her art is of people ascending into heaven based off cherry blossoms which grow out of your scars which is like a trauma metaphor okay except non-stop ideation right yeah every single cutscene. yeah is oh man it'd be so cool if i killed myself right. every single one right Okay. And we start with the suicide hotline stuff and we start with a main character that literally says, I don't need to reach out to nobody. Reaching out is for pussies. Right? So it's pretty clear that the theme of the game is if you're feeling like you're going to kill yourself, maybe you should reach out to somebody and talk to them okay. so that you can get some support and not kill yourself. And Anita right? is, ha is, is saying this to herself. Anita is saying, no, reaching out for help is for pussies. So she's, she's going through it as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so she's trapped in the suicide ghost dimension, blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay. Uh, whenever she um, sees the flashbacks with Maya, every single time you see them, more and more of the environment is covered with post notes of negative self talk. I say negative self talk because they're not from other students or kids at school or whatever. They're all self directed. Right. You're ugly. You're fat. Yeah. You're, you're stupid, Inter et cetera. Internalized. Right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So clearly Anita is building up to, to kill herself. 
you get to the you dodge the monster a couple times you get to the top of the building she leaps off right wakes up back in the building didn't work right couldn't kill herself right you then wiggle through and go into the circumstances of why Maya killed herself. Well, there is a third character here named Amelie, right? Amelie is a friend to the two girls, right? She's just a normal girl on the side. They're their pal, right? And when Anita and Amelie met Maya, Maya started to pay lots of attention to Amelie, right? Like nearly exclusively. Okay. And right. You even get a you even get a cut scene where like they introduce and it's from your perspective. Mm -hmm. And Maya like looks at you and goes, Hey, and then turns to talk to the person she really wants to talk to. Right, okay. Right? That that kind of thing going on. And then you find out over the course of this that Anita, our main character, upset that Maya is more popular than her and is better friends with her best friend, started a rumor at school that escalated and escalated and escalated and caused Maya's suicide. Okay. Because she was afraid that Maya was going to take her friend away. Okay. The remaining bits is dealing with her nightmares, childhood trauma, which is, uh, I'm going to be super cynical, like wildly, wildly, wildly cynical because Anita shows off what's called complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So post-traumatic stress disorder is you go through a traumatic event, and you have flashbacks, you have shakes, you have nightmares, you have uh, levels of degrees of anxiety, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder is post-traumatic stress disorder that's become totally untreated for so long that you're getting secondary effects and the secondary effects are difficulty maintaining relationships uh, uh guilt that comes out of nowhere anxiety horrible negative self-talk the reason why i say this is cynical is that if you type in complex pdsd into google you will get like the Cleveland Clinic or like the NHS description of complex PTSD, which you could use to write this character because she's not in depth enough. It looks like they typed in psychiatric illness and then read off the symptoms to apply to their character. Okay. Which is why I think the nightmare sequence about, you know, her horrible traumatic childhood is in there so that her character makes sense. So like they're WebMDing psychiatric illnesses like so past the starting. Line. So you're experiencing Anita's self uh, hatred and you're experiencing Maya's <laughs> journal entries to learn about both yeah. of them, but you're not learning about uh, Amelie's. Uh, yeah, anything. you learn a little bit and okay. she has her own problems, but she's mostly to the separate. So you go through the, the game, you learn that actually, oh, it's tragic. Maya actually was Anita's friend after all. Turns out she wasn't just drawing a big mural of Amelie, and that's what set Anita off. She was drawing a big mural of all of them. They were all friends, and she just forgot and only remembered after she killed herself. Her friend killed herself. So we now have a situation in which Anita goes, it's all my fault. I'm going to kill myself and texts Amelie. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to kill myself. Sorry. Bye. And then as she's about to put her foot over the goddamn edge, she gets a text message and goes, Hey, let's go shopping tomorrow. Don't leave me. We're friends. We'll just go hang out and go shopping. And she sees that and she steps off the edge. And she falls down and cries. And then the, the graffiti and the chains all split into flowers. And she's like, I am going to go shopping. Maya is. No, no, Anita. The girl we've been playing as. Maya's dead. She's super dead. The, Nothing to be done with her. Anita receives the text message. Yeah, that's right. From her living friend. From Emily. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she's and and so like you're supposed to feel like, hey, she reached out. Yeah. And someone reached out back. But the reach out was too late. Hey. 
And then the game ends on an incredibly bizarre thing where she says, like, the strongest animals don't need help line again and still believes it and then goes, but I don't even care. I just want somebody to care about me. And it's like, wow, you didn't change your mind at all. You actually just gave up. Is she speaking from beyond the grave at that point? No, no, no. She's she's alive. This is her walk off the building to to safety or whatever. Oh, right? oh! I thought that moment happened and that she received the message too late while she had already jumped. No, no. She's she's fine. She she, she walked it. back because she got a text message about I shopping. See, I see. I see. I see. Right. And what you're supposed to feel, and then it hits you with the suicide hotline thing again. <laughs> and and it, and like it's okay. it's like it's it's overwhelming. It's like hey, reach out, reach out. Reach out if you need help. Reach out if you need help. Right? Woman. Doesn't matter if you think it's for pussies. Do Reach out shopping, if you need though. help. Right? <laughs> Women be shopping. They do be shopping. <laughs> they be shopping. They be shopping. It's, it's just tone deaf. But what's actually yeah. way more okay. important. All right. And when when I say that the, like the, the the plot is wrong is that it's like reach out. All you have to do is reach out to somebody. And it's like it expects you to forget that there are like six or seven cutscenes in which Maya is looking at the camera going, I'm a, uh, sorry, Anita, I think I'm going to kill myself. I think I should kill myself. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be cool if I killed myself? Mm -hmm. And Anita goes, I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Would, would I be friends with Amelie again if you did that? Wow. <laughs> Like Whoa. that's not she doesn't say that out loud, but okay. like the reason she starts the rumor that causes Maya suicide is so she can be Amelie's best friend again. Right, right, right. That's, and by the end the of the game, okay. Maya is dead and Amelie is her best friend again. Yeah. And the theme of just reach out to somebody mm -hmm. is like I just watch someone reach out for days, if not weeks to somebody who wouldn't listen and was like kind of actively hoping for them to go away. Okay. <laughs> so it's like reach out to somebody who's not a psycho. See, the is the actual message. So every Silent Hill that I've, or at least from what I know, like the idea of the main character being sort of like, as you play them, they don't really know what's going on, but as you reveal it, you, you learn about the fucked up things they've done. When mm -hmm. I, hearing about these fucked up things that uh, I, um, Anita has done. She bullied, she bullied a girl into killing herself because she was jealous about her Twitter likes. Yeah, so that's <laughs> right. So, so like, that is having a character that has done these fucked up things in and of itself is not a, an issue. It's in where you go with that, right? Because right. Because there being something fucked up they have to get over or something they're not, whatever the case, however you play it, I, I hear that and go, do you use that flaw to then reach a conclusion that someone who's no. done that should that the, no. <laughs> the existence of that fucked up behavior with the twitter thing and the goal of getting back to the friendship and all that i have no problem with that existing as a part of what she's done it's where yeah, you so go from that here's where we get, here's where it goes like like extra fucky right so uh, anita was the recipient of very very extreme childhood abuse like her mom was very neglectful and like her brother got killed anita as well okay yeah, Anita was a whole, no, no. Anita is the one that got childhood abused. Okay, like, period. Okay, uh, I th and Am I th their names are too similar. I know. I thought you said Emily earlier was the walking like definition. No, of okay. That. Their names are too. I might have screwed it up. They're like all the same fucking name. It's annoying. Okay. Anita, the main, the character. main character. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got right. neglected, abused as a child, right. and her brother got murdered. Okay. Uh, by her mom, so she's all damaged and fucked up. Um and and traumatized it's trauma okay um and so you learn about all the bad things that anita did and then you find out that she was horribly traumatized as a child mm -hmm. and then that goes well okay this is what caused the the crazy insecurity that led to her doing these bad things okay so if um if the main character is the one who suffered the complex ptsd yeah um, what so this per Samantha America Strand, <laughs> the third yeah. person over here. Um, yeah. Who, or rather, like, do you learn anything about her and why her role in the in the three of she's, them? She's she's their friend. She's just a normal person that has she's doesn't have friend. any of those issues and is just. She existing. does, but like the the important part for the plot is she's their friend. Okay. All right. 
and they're friend fighting. They're like, no, mine. Kind of. Okay. okay. Um, so you find out, okay, Anita, our main character, was horribly abused as a yes. child. Yes. Therefore, this led to the, conse- the circumstances that enabled her to horribly abuse someone else. Maya. Yes. Which led to their death. Yes. Which then she feels suicidal guilt over. Right. Right. This is weirdly similar to the medium in which a person who was horribly traumatized in their youth goes on to enact that trauma against other people. Right. Medium says if you're so traumatized, you lash out against others. You should die. That was the that was like the big deal about the medium. It was like the worst possible lesson ever. Short message implies that if you're so traumatized, you horribly lash out against other people. Then that's okay because bad things happen to you as a kid. Like it goes like it's the inverse. It's like abuse is like an excuse to do bad things. Okay, so she the, the she gets a happy ending of sorts, and yeah, in that, uh, and and essentially what you're saying is that it doesn't it doesn't face the no, like her art rival dies, she has her best friend back, and she walks away. Okay, <laughs> because and she doesn't learn anything. Like because, that, cause, that's because the, again, I'm like I'm like taking this. I'm taking this as again the the new recent Silent Hill completion. You know, a, a new person that's just uh, experienced uh, uh, um, those games and like the bad things that James has done and the things that he thinks of himself. Yeah, like you get to experience those, and you get to watch the them mirrored in other people that are su- the supporting cast throughout yeah. that. Um, and then towards the end, as you see the guilt he feels for what he did, uh, mm-hmm. you then get a couple of different routes that you can end that with. Yeah, and the and the genius around James's portrayal in Silent Hill Two is that like what. Like you can you it's so smart because you even see exactly what happened and you even hear like arguments right before it happened. But what really matters is what was in his heart at the exact moment that it happened. Right. Because there's are he, he makes the argument that he did it because he was angry or selfish or sad or pitying or lo- right mm-hmm. and it's like well what was what were you feeling at that exact moment and the idea is that your behavior over the game is influencing okay well what what kind of person is he Are really you, right what was he and then it tries to chart an uh, an answer in the ending from well if it was he was actually really angry then you know, he's a horrible piece or of shit. Lust he's for the actually, nurses or yeah, 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 yeah right. right you know, like, yeah, what yeah. was it? What was the exact moment? Here, um, like, she's actively lamenting that Maya is still more popular in death, like at the start of the game. While as you're okay, okay. Like it, it would be like it would be like James flipping out his cell phone to look at like sexting pics of nurses right. while going, I wonder where my wife is at. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> and and again, if someone starts in the middle of their shit and has a journey, you can tell that story. I, I, I just, I, you know, each time there's like a character flaw here that I like, I just, I'm like, I, all I go to is like, it's not the, it's not a problem that that flaw exists. It's just where we go with it. You know? Uh, yeah. So it's it's it kind of goes nowhere, okay. and it's 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 schlock. Okay. It's it's dreck. Uh, it's written by people who don't understand the things they're writing about. Mm-hmm. They don't understand teenage girls. They don't understand complex PTSD. They mm-hmm. don't understand Silent Hill. Um. And so I saw like a really funny um Twitter post. I think a couple hours after this came out, which was being retweeted. So somebody like a year ago was like, you know what? Fuck it. Silent Hill's terrible. Those games are almost all awful except for the good ones. Yeah, make four new ones. Who gives a shit? What's the worst that could happen? And then they retweeted their thing like a year later just going, no. Because what do we got so far? We've got Ascension, which is like so bad. We can argue about whether or not a fucking robot wrote it. And we've got this, Mm -hmm. which is like 
a, a walkathon in the shadow of PD that controls like shit and has a stupid message. And they wanted to, and, and, and they wanted to approach, again, a very uh, 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 important subject matter, but I guess didn't have an understanding of what they were dealing with. Of any of it. Okay. And you would always want to assume or hear, assume that like someone on the team is like an expert in this and there's a no to consult and you know the writing is going back and forth while talking to people that know teenage um, girls are on their phones a lot so i don't i can't watch this <laughs> while we're going but asana did send me a, a one minute clip of an interview with someone who was perhaps a dev who's yeah i think i think that's the clip talk i talked about where he describes wanting to make a game about how the old people screwed everything up. Like, there's a line of dialogue in, like, the early games. Like, those stupid adults have ruined everything. Okay. Um, okay. And you find all sorts of uh, newspaper articles about the about the, the economic restoration of the city is falling apart because of COVID, etc. Oh, man. Um, okay. It's going to get, it's going to get, like, a thumbs up from me on um, your phone starts glitching out instead of the radio. Which oh, yeah. makes sense. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Um, and oh, that yeah. bit where you're flashbacking through your childhood and you get shorter every time you read something or open a door until your child size in the room you started in. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. So cool. So uh, you mentioned gameplay is very basic and not much to it. And you mentioned that the story is irresponsible in the subject matter. Um, what is. It also kind of doesn't make sense in, in some parts. You're just like, what? Uh, how does it. On a technical level, being scary, Bad. being scary, and not okay. Okay, uh, it's not scary. Um, uh, so it, it's um, the monster's cool. The cherry blossom monster is pretty cool, uh, and you have to run from it, uh, and it, it tries to block your path. Mm. Um, the problem is, is that in order to beat the game's final level you have to start juking the monster around corners and like waiting for it to walk towards one hallway to jump down the other hallway. And you spend like that last sequence in like one run was like 10, 11 minutes. And by the time I got to the end of it, like the monster's not fucking scary anymore. It's just, uh, yeah, it gets boiled it's, down. It's to like mechanics. I'm playing. It's like a sh the shittiest game of dead by daylight. Right, right, right. I've yeah. ever played. Yeah, that. I mean, that is to, to to be fair. I guess I'm like depending on. I, I imagine a lot of horror games have this problem where once you know the mechanics of what it is, it's not scary anymore. You're just going through the rote like how to avoid. Yeah, Silent Hill Four thing. fixed that problem by having the guy chasing after you just have a gun. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Man, <laughs> I walk into a room and Walter just lights you up from across the field. I can imagine uh, 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 the intention with this type of short, free, full game being one where the hope was this would be a well-received, like... Um, hey, Silent Hill! Well, not just that, but also here's a, um, a game with meaning to the way it handles the subject matter again the way it's handling suicide in a way where you can like recommend this to people to go like oh if you've been through something similar play this game it might have something to tell you i can i can imagine a world where a short and sweet share this amongst your friends to get a um a powerful message was the intended goal here hmm yeah okay and and, and also the game like reeks it it stinks of Wow, we're we're really doing something good here. Uh, <laughs> cut to the live <laughs> like, action. Like, you know what I mean? Talk about cut to the live action. I'm like, oh boy. All right, look, send you a sacrifice. I, I I liked, but man, I have, a I have you the quote. Somebody went and got the quote that she that Anita says. This is the final quote of the game's message. This this is the short message. Seeking connection with others is a weakness. It's running away. The strongest animals don't form groups. They act alone and only need themselves to survive. Those who betray themselves to fit into groups are pathetic. There's no beauty in living like that. But I don't really mind. I just want someone to understand me. So, like, do you see what I mean? Like, the game's, like, premise is, like, is wrong. And then she, like, makes the addendum and she's still wrong? Man. 
exactly. <laughs> like I was about to ask between this and the medium, I'm like, who's handled it in a in a in a solid way? And I was like, oh, it's called the in water ending. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, like, yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound hmm. controversial, but if you if you give me literally 60 seconds, you'll be like, oh yeah, you're probably right. Silent Hill 2 is the worst thing that ever happened to Silent Hill. <laughs> nope. I don't need 60 seconds. I need one. I get it. Okay. 